like to thank you all. Uh, I would like to thank you all for joining today's webinar and introduction to Presto. I'm Ram Upendran, Technical Product Marketing Manager for ANA. Over the next 60 minutes, we'll explore and understand what is Presto, look at Presto architecture, and learn how to benchmark Presto. So the understanding of technology behind Presto. So what is Presto? Right? Uh, so Presto is open source distributed MPP SQL query engine. The key features of Presto is query in place, which means you don't need to move data, uh, what you normally have to do in traditional data warehouse applications where you have to move data to, to, uh, to do analytics, whereas with the Presto, you don't need to do it. It's query in place. And the next thing is federated querying, which means once you, oh, since the data is all in different formats, you can query data from different formats and query the data and then join them. And then it uses the ANSI SQL compliant, which means you don't need to learn new language or anything. The standard SQL is good enough. So the Presto was developed by Facebook. Uh, they designed to, uh, from the ground up, they want to develop for fast analytic queries against any data size. They have done it, uh, they approved it against uh, petabytes of data. So one of the architecture behind the Presto is right, since they want to do query in place and they want to do federated querying, what they have done is they have a pluggable architecture, which means they have connectors, which connects to many data formats, which can talk to them and then query the data from that. So this, uh, this makes a literally a scale on anything. Um, and uh, Presto is open source. Uh, Facebook has open source the Presto. So it's open source. It's hosted on GitHub. Uh, you can find it out at github.com slash Presto DB. Let's uh, take a overview of Presto, right? Uh, Presto, uh, we call it as a Presto cluster, which consists of a coordinator and a set of workers. So the Presto cluster can be reached out by using any application, right? Any BI tools or any application or any J uh, Jupyter notebooks, right? ML notebooks, all these things, uh, which uses JDBC, ODBC can easily connect to Presto cluster. Uh, once it comes to Presto cluster, it's easier to uh, query uh, data from uh, different data formats. Uh, Presto does it using its connectors. Um, Presto is one of the fast growing open source projects in data analytics, right? The reason for this is there are, uh, the driver for this are two. Um, one is the business needs and the second is technology trends, right? So when you look at the business needs, it's more, the, uh, it's all data driven decision making, right? And so it is the business have to go through a lot of data to make such decisions. And the technology trends with this, all this cloud transformation, what is happening is disintegration of storage and compute. Uh, given that S3 storage is so, so cheap, uh, it's giving rise to, to data lakes. So I have pasted a few of uh, companies which are currently using Presto, and there are more, since it's open source, there are a lot of companies using Presto today. So the common question is, is Presto a database, right? Oh, Presto is not a database, it's a query engine because it doesn't have the storage layer, uh, layer on it. It's just a query engine. It just uh, it can just query a, a data, data sets. Uh, is it related to Hadoop? No, it's not related to Hadoop uh, because Presto was developed as a replacement for Hive. Uh, and so it doesn't, yeah, it's not related to Hadoop. How is it different from a data warehouse, right? Um, so traditional data warehouses needs to move data around to do data to do analytics. Presto also does analytics, but without moving the data around, that's the difference between data warehouse and Presto. The Presto use cases, right? If you look at the, uh, the typical interactive ad hoc querying, reporting, and dashboarding, these are all typical use cases for where Presto can easily be used, and and the next one is very important, right? Uh, today, this data lakes and data lake houses are coming and analytics on top of it has become uh, more prevalent and more important. Um, and Presto is designed for it because it doesn't have, uh, what data lakes is basically it contains data from different data formats, right? And so Presto can qu uh, query different data formats. It becomes more suitable for data lake house analytics. And federated querying is also across data source. That's also a feature of Presto. And so it's more aligned towards to it. Uh, transformation using SQL is basically, you have a data set, right? You have some set of CSV files. You want to move to packet format, right? You want to change the data formats and it is easy to do using Presto. These are uh, use cases for Presto. And the Presto 
architecture, um, what makes Presto different? Right? If you look at the architecture wise, it's a scalable architecture. It has got pluggable connectors uh, and it has got uh, good performance. Let's uh, let's look at what is scalable architecture, right? So uh, Presto uh, Presto cluster consist, uh, contains uh, two roles, right? Has two roles. One is coordinator, and uh, other other is worker. The coordinator will talk to the applications like AI tools or notebooks, right? It will talk to all applications so using JDBC, ODBC, whichever is getting connected to it, you can talk to those. You send the results back, take the queries, and all these things is done through coordinator. Now, worker is the one which goes and connects to the data source using the connectors, will talk to different data source and bring the data, right? And so as the data grows, you can add workers and scale, right? And it has been proven at web scale companies that you can go from uh, start to start with two workers and you can go till thousand workers. It has been validated. So it's a, it has got a scalable architecture. Uh, if we look a little, Closer into the architecture, right? You have all this BI tool notebook clients, which uses a, uh, which connects to the Presto coordinator and then sends the SQL queries. Once it receives the SQL query, what it does is it passes, analyzes the query, and uh, creates a plan. And for that plan, it gets scheduled across all these workers. So what this workers does is uses the Presto connector and reaches out to any storage, right? It could be a data lakes or lake houses, the data could be anything, object store, MySQL, Elasticsearch, Kafka, it could be any data set it can, using it. There is a connector for it. It can, Presto can talk to the data source and uh, uh, get the data. And uh, and once it gets the data, right, it has sometimes, it, you know, since each worker brings some data, it has to move the data within themselves so the workers can communicate among themselves and then create the result, uh, resulting data set and send it to the coordinator and coordinator can send it back to the uh, clients. Um, so, uh, so one of the things, uh, uh, there are uh, the, since it's a query engine, right? It has it has a nice optimizer. It knows how to uh, uh, how, how to do efficient query transformation? How to run queries efficiently? Uh, just to give an example, right? If you have if you have a select queries, you want to select something from a table, and you have air condition where you want to filter some data, right? So when it goes to the worker and when it talks to to the data source, right? It's not going to fetch all the data, bring it up. And then the, uh, the Presto is not going to eliminate all the data, throw out and select only few queries. Instead, what it does is it can do filtration at the data connector level, which means when it selects the data itself, it will select only the relevant data, not all the data, right? So the filtration happens at the connector level. And so it becomes more efficient. So this is just one example uh, I gave about how uh, Presto um, query engine is effective. There are many operators and many um, many efficient algorithms have been implemented so that it uh, it, it does the job faster. So uh, as it since the Presto communicates with the data source using connectors, right? It, uh, Presto has got different connectors. It can talk to MongoDB posters, it, whether it is structured, unstructured, semi-structured, uh, PrestoDB can uh, talk to them using connectors. Uh, there are a lot of uh, open source connectors as well as proprietary connectors for Presto. So let's take a look at the Presto connector data model, right? So the connector, right, it's a driver for the data source and the connector needs a, uh, needs a catalog and schemas and tables because uh, Presto works on the SQL level, so it has to be mapped. So uh, if you look at this, uh, let's take an example as a Hive connector, right? Uh, the Hive connector can talk to a data set in the S3 storage, right? So what happens is in this scenario, what will happen is if you have data on S3, you need to create, use Hive as a connector. And then on the Hive, you have to create a table which will map the data on the S3. Once it does this mapping, then the coordinator can talk using high meta store can talk to the uh, split the work to the workers and get the data from the uh, S3 uh, storage. This is just an example of how a connector works for object store and file system. Uh, since most of the data today resides on S3. Uh, press to high connector um, supports different uh, uh, so different file types, right? The commonly used file types are ORC or Parquet or Avro or RC file, CSV, JSON, text file, and sequence file. These are all commonly used uh, 
uh, files which are supported, which are open formats, right? It's, um, which are supported. And to support all these things, right? Um, uh, Presto Hive connector or, or the Presto does not does not need to do doesn't need to do any data ingestion, duplication, or movement of data. It does everything query uh, query data in place. It does it in place queries. So uh, let's see why Presto is fast, right? Uh, Presto uh, does everything in memory processing. All the processing happens in memory, and it's a pull model, as I explained to you uh, previously, right? It, it does it doesn't pull all the data, unnecessary data, and then uh, take all the data and then select some of them. Not like that, right? It's select when it pulls the data itself from the connector level itself, it can select uh, data what it wants. The pull model is efficiently done, and so it uses columnar storage and execution. Um, so we saw why Presto, right? How, how it maps to open data lake analytics, right? Currently, uh, there are data warehouses and cloud data warehouses solution which are all, which are closed format and can, everything is done through this closed format uh, processing. Whereas with this, uh, with the open data lake analytics, what is happening is a lot of move, data moving into cloud data lake and uh, business are building a lot of uh, data lakes it becomes uh, with all open data format it needs a uh, uh, sql processing uh, which is which is more open source right presto is a more open source uh, sql processing so it it becomes more ideal to use presto on top of data lake when you have different data formats so under uh, two open source open formats right uh, this helps the case for open data lake analytics so presto becomes a best use case for open data lake analytics uh, so we uh, just now we saw uh, what is Presto and what is the uh, architecture of Presto and how efficient it could be, right? And so all these things are nice and it's always um, good to do a benchmarking of Presto, right? It helps to understand whether it is useful for us. Yes, Facebook has used and there are a lot of companies using Presto. Uh, it performs nicely, it works nicely, all these things are fine, but whether it uh, it matches your use case is very important. And so uh, benchmarking Presto uh, will help you to make some uh, vision, right? Once you, how to do benchmarking of Presto is what we are going to see now. Uh, benchmarking is a critical component, right? It helps you to identify what is the system requirement, resource requirement, how many you know, workers you need, how many, uh, what kind of a sizing, right? The infrastructure sizing you need. All these things can be determined once you run uh, benchmarking uh, to get a better understanding. And the resource usage during various operations, right? Each query takes uh, different resource requirements. And so you, you will have a better understanding of resource requirement. And the collection and the performance metrics helps to understand what such uh, what each operation is doing. So the common standard is uh, uh, industry standard is to use TPCH for um, for analytics workload and TPCH uh, since it's a uh, industry standard it's a one thirty seven page uh, document. Uh, so just to summarize here, right? What it has is it has got like eight tables. And it has got like 22 complex and long running query, uh, queries. So uh, what TPC uh, says for different data set size, right? It calls it as a scale factor. If you have one GB of data, it will say scale factor one. And if you have hundred GB, it's going to say SF, uh, scale factor hundred. And if it is one terabyte, it will have as a thousand. These are all scale factors, which means the data set size being used for the uh, for testing. So how the, so the, now we have this TPCH to do benchmarking and uh, so the application right you can use this uh, to do benchmarking. So how to do benchmarking with Presto right? Uh, Presto DB has a, a bench two tool as uh, a built a bench two tool to do benchmarking. Uh, so you can see uh, on the right hand side of this uh, slide this uh, image, um, you can see there are two components to this bench two tool. Uh, one is called benchmark driver. And the other is a benchmark service. This benchmark driver executes queries on the Presto cluster, and then uh, it sends the results to this benchmark service. The benchmark service collects its results and stores, stores it on your Postgres database. And then the benchmark UI has a, uh, this has a web-based UI, which can show benchmark results and history on this. Also, there is a, um, uh, clustering, uh, cluster monitoring component to this benchmarking. What it does is it, does, it collects data 
um, from uh, from the uh, from the Presto cluster, right? Like, such as the CPU, memory usage, and uh, network usage. It collects all this information. So there is a link which links this uh, benchmark and the monitoring UI. So which helps you uh, to get the whole picture of how much. So this helps you to identify how much time the query is to, to complete, and as well as what is the resource uh, usage requirement. So let us take a step and see how to, uh, since it's an open source uh, tool, right? You have to uh, build this tool, right? It's uh, you need Java 8 and JDK. Uh, you have to download Bench 2 from GitHub. Uh, once you download Bench 2, you need to build uh, build the Bench 2 project using Maven. Um, once you run this command, the Maven command to bench uh, build it, right? Once it gets built. You just need to step into this bench to service Docker directory. Once you log in, go into this directory, you run this Docker compose command. What is going to happen is going to start uh, Docker instances for Graphite, Grafana, Postgres, and bench to. Uh, the previous slide, right? We saw this all the service, right? The bench to service, um, the Postgres database, the uh, Graphite and Grafana for all these things. Uh, it starts a Docker instance. Uh, there is no configuration needed. Everything is pre-configured, so it is a uh, good. It can be directly can use it directly. So the next is uh, we have to. Uh, if you remember this, right? We saw all the things for for the benchmark driver. We had to download the Presto DB source, and you had to build this uh, direct, uh, build this component called Presto Bench to Benchmark. This is the benchmark driver for Presto. Uh, once you build this. Uh, the next step is uh, data generation. So how to do, uh, do data generation, right? Uh, the Presto uh, itself has uh, this built-in TPCH within it. Uh, all the data generation data sets has been uh, uh, built within, TP, uh, within Presto. So it's easier, you can say create schema and give a schema name and say you can give a S3 location, uh, S3 bucket name. And so it's going to create uh, all the data set on this location. Uh, for example, when you run this create tables, a line item, it's going, uh, we have set the form format packet for this, uh, just use packet. You can use any uh, ORC or other file types, whatever you choose to use for your application, right? Or uh, you can use uh, any type. And then you can say as select start from uh, TPCH SF100. Once you say SF100, it's going to uh, create a data set for 100 GB. If you say TPCH as a thousand, it is going to create a terabyte of uh, data set. So it has got all these things. Once you run this, uh, run this all the statements, it's going to create all the eight tables and that uh, TPCS data set is ready to uh, be used. Uh, now we have the TPCS data set ready. Uh, what you have to do is, uh, you have to do some configuration for this bench to tool. Uh, so, so to configure, right? There is a, a you have to create an application and that YAML file where you have to uh, set the uh, uh, set the URL, URL for your Hive location wherever your Hive is running. Normally, uh, Hive uh, Hive will be used as a catalog. Uh, so, can, Hive can run within uh, the, with the coordinator instance itself on the same container where coordinator is running. You can run Hive or you can run, run Hive as a, on a separate co container. That is up to you. So, uh, so you you, know, you need to define the uh, URL for Hive URL location for Hive as well as URL loc location for Presto cluster, and you know, and you set the environment as uh, I have just set it for this example as Presto Dev environment. You can set anything here, and then you can say. Uh, whether you want to collect the metrics, right? This is the one which is going to collect all the data and then show the results, right? So you, we have to set metric collection enable to true. Once this is set, uh, there is one more configuration file as to, as to be modified. So um, so it's called uh, TPC. If you see, this is called TPCH.yaml. Uh, this file is or buried inside Presto DB, Presto Bench to Benchmark, Source, Main Resources, Benchmark, Presto Directory. It has buried inside that. You had to go inside this directory particularly and edit this file. So this has got some uh, keywords here. I'll explain more about these keywords in a minute. Um, so, uh, so you have to set the, uh, the main is you have to set what is your schema, right? For the Hive, uh, if you're using Hive, you can use Hive or Blue. 
um, but uh, you, uh, Hive is uh, straightforward. You can use Hive, and you can say what is uh, whatever the schema you are using. Uh, you have to specify here, and the uh, and then you can say uh, um, the data source is Presto because here we mentioned the data data source here as Presto. Uh, here we have to say it as Presto, and this is the location of where the uh, TPCH queries are uh, residing, and this is uh, under this directory. Right? If you look at this Presto, uh, under this there is a TPCH directory where all the TPCH queries are there, and you can set the runs. How many times you want to run this benchmarking? You can say you want to run for ten times or five times, right? Because you just run one time, you could, you warm up the cache, and not much of active might be. If you run multiple times, you might see some differences. So you can set the runtime to more than five or ten, whatever you choose to. And then there are pre-warm up runs, so you can set it to two. Oh, and you can say before execution, you can um, set, you can sleep, you can say sleep for four seconds so that between queries there are some timing. And there are no race conditions or anything. And then you can, there is also under this Presto directory, there is a SQL file where you can set uh, some of the session parameters of Presto. Uh, since Presto is a query engine, right? It is an optimizer. The optimizer has got a few tunables which you can use it. Uh, try to see because it uh, all those things uh, all these queries are complicated queries right it has got multiple joins in them uh, you can select whether you want to use a automatic join or a partition join there are some options there so you can set some of them here and you can set the frequency how many times you want to run it or run this entire suite right you can say per week i want to run 10 times or two times because depending depending upon your application how you want to run you can set the frequency here and try to see how it works and so as i said right here is a list of keywords uh, that could be used to define the benchmark indicators in the above file so uh, we saw the data source, query name runs, pre warm up runs, and the concurrency. Uh, by default, uh, the bench2 tool runs as a sequential benchmark, which means it will run each one query at a time. In case if you want to see the concurrency uh, of performance, right, you can set uh, more than greater than one, and then it will run concurrently. You can set a uh, maximum. I think it can it can run three queries concurrently. Um, or there are other ways means to run concurrently. Right? You can start two or three uh, bench two drivers and then run run them concurrently. If you want to have more than three uh, concurrently running queries, and uh, there are um, uh, there are before and after execution uh, macros you can run in case you want to clear cache before the uh, before running or you want to run something additionally before that. Right? You have this kind of uh, post and pre and post uh, options where you can run some macros, where you can run some commands on the uh, Presto cluster, or you can clean up some of the cleanup or you can do cleanup or you can add something more or do all those things. Uh, as I told you, right, the frequency is uh, can be executed once per day or seven, one, seven times once per week, you can set the frequency of it. Uh, this is basically uh, setting the run environment right? because you, since you're using the uh, gra Grafana and the um, bench to UI, right? Uh, you need to create a link of it. So you just set the environment, uh, set the content type, and this has to be done for to satisfy the bench to tool. Once you set this, you are uh, will be ready to run the benchmark test. Um, so the benchmark, the bench to benchmark is a Java application. So you use Java command and then run this uh, jar file. And here um, you will be say, you'll be passing the uh, location of where the SQL file resides. Right? This is the file it resides. Um, since see there is a time set, right? it, uh, it makes sense to modify some of the TPCH queries the way you want it. In case if you want to without breaking the the 137 page long document right? without breaking the specification you can sometimes modify the queries so you can use alternate directory or something then you can say what is the directory the sql files are going to be the queries are going to be and then this is benchmark is basically this is saying where the tpch.yaml file uh, location is um this is the active benchmark so you can have multiple tpch.yaml so that you can run it with the different variations and then in case of uh, even when you run with TPCH YAML, if you want to um, overwrite 
something you can use is overhead.yaml and you can uh, override it. So once you run this uh, benchmark, right, it collects the results and you uh, use a user interface, the benchmark UI, right? open a browser, go to the local host, and then you can see the test results here. Uh, if you notice here that uh, if you created a tpcs.yaml, it is the name is going to be presto tpch, and it's going to say the status, what is the schema it used, what is the join distribution it used, uh, any specific uh, option you have used, and, and then how much time it took to complete the test. Um, so if you click inside this um, inside this query, what will happen is it will give more uh, performance metrics, such as the duration, right? Since you are going to run multiple times, you are going to get the uh, mean, standard deviation, min and max, uh, as well as the, uh, what was the output data site, how much uh, data was processed, all those kind of details, and how much time it was blocked, what was the CPU time, uh, all this and all these metrics will be uh, listed inside. If you go if you drill inside the test. So for each test, it has all this information. So additionally, uh, right here is example where I am searching for query three, and so I've run uh, two different tests: one with TPCH table partition with HANA cache and without a no cache. So I used two different TPCH.yaml files, and then I uh, ran this test. And a good thing with this user interface is it has this compare option. One is you can export to CSV, the other is a compare option. Once you click on the comp compare option, so it's going to give you a nice query, uh, resulting graph of how it performed. You can see that uh, with cache, it performed better than without cache. And so it's going to give a similar metrics for all the uh, metrics listed here. For all this metrics listed here, it's going to give that a graph and how, how it how it turned out. So it gives you more details on on, on the when you compare the results, you know, and all the metrics. So uh, I spoke about how the difference of uh, running with uh, cache and without cache, right? So the performance difference. Uh, so let me just uh, briefly introduce about Ana Cloud. Uh, Ana Cloud is a fully managed Presto service, right? Uh, so, so what we do is we enable data platform engineers to uh, run Presto in minutes versus days, right? Uh, because uh, we understand since it's a query optimizer, it has got a lot of tunable. The Presto has got a lot of tunables. Understanding those tunables and then yeah, designing the infrastructure, right? How to set the memory uh, uh, tuning and all those things, right? The memory options, what to set, and all those things. Uh, this takes uh, time to learn and do it. And so what we have done is we have a fully integrated and pre-configured uh, solution, right? Uh, it's just zero to Presto in 30 minutes, I would say. Uh, that's what it is. It just doesn't take much time. And there is no ETL, so there is no need to go, uh, wait for data to move, right? That, that time is eliminated because you are going to do in-place analytics, which is a good thing. And how Hana Cloud does this? Uh, Hana Cloud has got two components. One is called Hana Console, where it has this cluster orch orchestration, consolidated logging, security and access, and billing support. Uh, Presto uh, Hana is pay as you go model, so you pay for what you use. And then uh, there is a compute plane which runs in the customer account. It is a win in VPC Presto cluster. What we do is we create clusters, right? Pre configure, we configure the clusters and run it on the compute plane on the customer's account. So we have no access to data. Although we manage the clusters, we don't have any access to the data. We just uh, provision the, the cluster and configure it if, uh, efficiently. Uh, and uh, and so at the data resides. And so the security is not a concern here. It's uh, taken care of. So uh, I just talked about what is the, what Akana can do. I'll just uh, do a uh, short demo uh, of uh, Anna. Um, so I, what I, I do have a cluster here already created. 
uh, for just for the purpose of demonstration, I will just walk you through the cluster creation screen uh, to uh, see what what Ana does, right? And so here you can give a name, and then there is an option for concurrency mode. Whether uh, when you run some test clusters, you can run it in LO concurrency mode. When you want to run for uh, production case, you can choose high concurrency mode. There is an option for it, and then. Um, when you select the coordinator and the workers, right? Uh, you need to have a beefier instance for coordinators. You can select different instances that are uh, depending depending on the workload. You can choose instances. Uh, similarly, for worker also. And then uh, the important thing about Tahana is the scaling strategy. Uh, see, uh, see if you, for example, you say today you want to start with four or four worker node, right? When, the, when there is no work is being done, it will scale back to one worker. So you don't have uh, instances running around, uh, lying around based without effect, uh, idle, right? Without, uh, there, is, there will be no idle instances. Uh, so after 30 minutes of uh, um, idle time, the, it will scale down to one instances. So that is one thing. And there is a one more option, which is scale out uh, options, right? When you run some queries which takes more CPU, you can set it for a minimum of uh, whatever you want to, and then you can set the maximum here, and then you can set a scale out step size. So accordingly, the, um, it's going to scale. Uh, if you, you can start with four, and you can say maximum is 16 with the steps. So as the workload increases, it's going to go up. And once the workload completes, and based on the idle time timer, it's going to go back to whatever to, uh, to the minimum uh, worker node count. Uh, Anna comes with, uh, uh, since uh, Anna is for AWS, right? Runs on AWS, uh, comes with uh, Hive Meta Store by default. Uh, so you can use Anna's Hive Meta Store uh, catalog as a connector for uh, S3, or you can bring your own uh, Meta Store, like the uh, Hive Meta Store, uh, you're fine with it. So in case of if you go with uh, Anna's Hive Meta Store, there is an option to select uh, instance type for uh, Hive also. And we do have options to, uh, we, uh, we have options to collect the uh, uh, query logs, which will, uh, so which can give you insight on what type of queries are run and how much time it took. And also uh, here is the option, right? You can enable IO caching. Uh, so IO caching is basically when you rerun some of the queries, which Reuses data. What we do is we cache them on a EBS SSD drive so that it becomes more faster. That's why you saw that uh, when it is partition, right? Partitions are many files, and so when you are going to reuse the partitions instead of uh, going every time to S3, you cache it on this EBS SSD. Uh, it's going to be um, faster. And the cluster credential, right? uh, username and password to create a cluster. Uh, let me walk you through the cluster. Um, so within this cluster, uh, uh, this provides the cluster information, like what is the version, what is the worker count. You can see that now I'm not running any workers, right? So it's scaled down to one node, uh, one, in, one in, instance, one worker instance, and what is the coordinator, and what type of uh, instance I'm using for workers for high is listed and whether IO caching is enabled. Uh, similarly, the scaling strategy, uh, in case if I want to change the scaling stra strategy, it is possible. And this is the Presto endpoint. Uh, Presto endpoint is the one which is uh, uh, which shows, which is the user interface for Presto, where it says what are the running queries, active workers, and all those things, right? So, uh, uh, Go back. Yeah, yeah. And there are, uh, so as I mentioned, uh, it's how high meta store uh, is listed here because I'm using Anam and his catalog here. And then I'm using your MySQL data source also. Um, let me show you a uh, simple example here. Uh, so Presto comes with uh, Superset, which is a data visualization tool. It is built within Ana Cloud. Uh, and so what we do here is, uh, as example, I'm just uh, selecting data from MySQL and joining it with the data from the 
uh, S3 uh, file and then combining combining it, I'm going to run this one. Uh, so once it joins, you can see the, the head rate rejoining, right? I'm able to join data from MySQL with the S3 and then get the results. Uh, so I was looking for movies with weapons and so I could, uh, I got three movies. So this is a, this is a small example of how uh, uh, Presto can do federated query. And coming back to uh, to this demo. Um, so, uh, you know, it's Presto is open source software, whereas Sagana Cloud is a managed service for Presto, and we are available on AWS Marketplace. You can sign up for a 14-day free trial and see uh, how it works. Uh, you can either use a open source Presto configure it, run it, or if you want to directly give a try, you can take a 14-day free trial and uh, see how it works for you, for your environment, and see uh, uh, whether Presto helps in your use case. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank, thanks for listening to my presentation all this time. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, how to get, get involved with Presto? Right? Uh, since Presto is open source, you can join the Slack channel and ask questions. So if you run into some issues, when you try to uh, run Presto, you have some something, want to know some connector is supported or not, or you have some questions, right? You can join the Slack channel and ask questions. Uh, or once you use Presto, if you feel very happy about that, you can come and write a blog on how you are able to run Presto for your uh, application. And there are some virtual meetup groups uh, currently for Presto where you can talk to other uh, users and uh, get more, get to know more about Presto. And in case if you want to contribute to, to the project, it's github.com slash PrestoDB. I will highly recommend, please contribute to the project. Uh, Presto uh, open source needs more help. Uh, it would be nice to have more people contrib contributing to this project. And uh, it's time for questions. If you have questions, I can answer them. So, um, okay, uh, see, with, with respect to encryption, right, encryption will have some impact on the operations. So it all depends upon what type of encryption um, uh, we, uh, we don't see Presto is a query engine. Uh, so whatever encryption you want to use on the storage layer, you can use it. And if your application can read that encryption, it is fine. Um, so, uh, so we don't put any uh, limits on the encryption. Uh, when it comes to Presto DB and Snowflake, right? Uh, it has. Uh, I will go back to this particular slide. Uh, right. This is what the difference between. Uh, this is the difference between uh, Presto DB uh, and Snowflake. So on. On the data warehouse side, this is Snowflake basically. Uh, so it's a closed source and uh, and it is a closed format. So you cannot uh, use any open format, right? Whereas it is, you know, it is for, for since it's a cloud data warehouse, you need to move data around uh, to do any pro 
uh, any analytics on it. Here, it's in place, right? If you have data on MySQL, or if you have data on S3, just now I did an example, right, where I was able to query from uh, MySQL uh, versus S3. So whereas here, you are, uh, uh, with uh, data warehouses, you have to move data around. That is one thing. Um, so that is the major difference. It's open source, it's open format. It is uh, it's an advantage of uh, Presto, and that's the difference. Uh, query in place and uh, federated querying are the two things which uh, differentiates between Presto DB and Snowflake. If that helps. Yeah, um, please reach out to us if you have any additional questions. Okay, wonderful. Thank you so much, Ram, for your time today. And thank you everyone for joining us. This is a quick reminder, this recording will be up on the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day. Bye.